we are learning these days is that we might have to give up that what Einstein holds sacred, namely space and time. So he was always thinking, well, we have little pieces of space and time, and out of this we build the whole universe. In a radical theory, known as the holographic universe, space and time are created by entangled quantum particles on a sphere that's infinitely far away. What's happening in space is in some sense all described in terms of a screen outside here. The ultimate description of reality resides on this screen. Think of it as kind of uh, quantum bits living on that screen. And this, like a movie projector, creates a illusion of the three-dimensional reality that I'm now experiencing. It may be impossible to intuitively understand this wild mathematical idea, but it suggests that entanglement could be what forms the true fabric of the universe. The most puzzling element of entanglement, that you know, somehow two points in space can communicate, becomes less of a problem because space itself has disappeared. In the end, we just have this quantum mechanical world. There is no space anymore. And so in some sense, the paradoxes of entanglement, the EPR paradox disappears into thin air. Truly understanding quantum mechanics will only happen when we put ourselves on the entanglement side and we stop privileging the world that we see and start thinking about the world as it actually is. Science has made enormous progress for centuries by sort of breaking complicated systems down into parts. When we come to phenomena like quantum entanglement, that scheme breaks. When it comes to the bedrock of quantum mechanics, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. The basic motivation is just to learn how nature works. What's really going on? Einstein said it very nicely. He's not interested in this detailed question or that detailed question. He just wanted to know what were God's thoughts when he created the world. Here we go. The wave's going to come in from the top. You'll notice that the date 11.9 is coded to 9.11. I always look at dates. Um, I'm going to run this. This is running at 50% speed, and I'm going to give you one more with filters added. And there's the wave again. Uh, it's a great shot because it is the first time we get to see a zoom uh, up close on the moon of the wave. And there it is really slowed down. Uh, I always shoot wide because I want the whole moon in frame, but all this footage really adds something to what we know. Now what you need, look to the right there. See that noise coming into frame? He shot at a lower resolution, and when I ran these films... The law of manifestation clearly explained in declassified CIA document. Patterning. This technique involves use of the consciousness to achieve desired objectives in the physical, emotional, or intellectual sphere. It involves concentration on the desired objective, while in a focus 12 state, extension of the individual's perception of that objective into the whole expanded consciousness and its projection into the universe with the intention that the desired objective is already a matter of established achievement, which is destined to be realized within the time frame specified. This particular methodology is based on the belief that the thought patterns generated by our consciousness in a state of expanded awareness create holograms which represent the situation we desire to bring about and, in so doing, establish the basis for actual realization of that goal. Once the thought-generated hologram of the sought-after objective is established in the universe, it becomes an aspect of reality which interacts with the universal hologram to bring about the desired objective which might not, under other circumstances, ever occur. In other words, the technique of patterning recognizes the fact that since consciousness is the source of all reality, our thoughts have the power to influence the development of reality in time-space as it applies to us if those thoughts can be projected with adequate intensity. However, the more complicated the objective sought, 
and the more radically it departs from our current reality, the more time the universal hologram will need to reorient our reality sphere to accommodate our desires. Monroe trainers caution against attempting to force the pace of this process because the individual could succeed in dislocating his existing reality with drastic consequences. Here comes the first wave. There it goes, and here comes the second wave right behind it. <laughs> 